Welcome to the winter rotation study. Um, I was talking a lot about the different rotations and what we're looking at here on the farm. Um, so, you know, we got the big plots out, out, out across the farm, but within that we have trials that look like this one. Um, we're looking a little about two acres in size with this one. Um, this is a study that was initiated back in, in 2017, um, where we have winter wheat early, or um, we plant winter wheat, we had winter peas, and then we had winter canola. And then we follow a subsequent spring crop, and right now we're looking at that subsequent spring crop. This is a study, we're in our third year, so we had the trial was established in 2017. And last year in 2019, we had winter pea, winter wheat, winter canola running this way. And then this spring, we just seed, just like we're doing with our, our commercial drill, just running across it. And then we're going to come through and look at the rotational benefits of having those crops. So this is the third year of this, this study. On the treatment crops, that being the winter wheat, the winter pea, and the winter canola, we're looking at production cost, um, the yield, and looking at some of those, the economic returns with that. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the gross economics um, returns. On the subsequent spring wheat, we're looking at yield, test weight, protein, and then also looking at some gross economic returns. Kind of looking at not just what you're getting individually, but what does that rotational crop bring for those subsequent crops that follow it. Um, just running through the numbers on wheat in 17, um, the, the winter wheat was 130 bushel an acre. In 2018, we we're at 66 bushel. This piece right here last year, the winter wheat was 83 bushel on this one on, on average. So adding all those up, the winter wheat was 5,568 pounds an acre or 93 bushel an acre. On the peas, um, we have 3,594 and 17. So, so less in 18, the winter wheat was 3,900 pounds. Peas was almost 2,000 pounds at 1,918. Um, in 19, wheat was 4,997. The peas were 2,025. Um, and when you add it, look at it overall, on average, wheat averages 5,568 pounds over the three years. The peas average 2,589 pounds. And when I go through that, now you probably want to know what happened with the canola. Well, um, much like some of the farmers and some of the issues they have with winter canola, um, in this study, we've also had some of our issues raising winter canola. The first year um, was a mistake that we made, or I made, and we got some stuff confused and we put Roundup on it, and it was a non-Roundup ready canola. We used Amanda in this trial. So the first year um, in 17, this year we never got any canola data. Um, in 2018, when we established that study, we had what also happens to a lot of farmers once in a while when you try to establish winter canola, and we had the horn lark come in and really devastated our stands and really um, reduced what we had, so we had to do some interseeding with spring wheat and stuff as well. And we also did that in 17 with, with the canola. And last year, in 19 at this location, the canola came up, looked beautiful, and we got an early frost, and it really had a, it really took them a toll on the canola that was halfway down this hill. So we really only had a half a stand of winter canola and we filled that in with spring canola. So over these three years, we never really did get uh, uh, um, a very good comparison between canola and wheat and canola and peas. So what I'm talking about is just a lot between what's going on with the wheat and the peas. Um, so that kind of explains that. So. 5,568 pounds for wheat, 2,589 pounds an acre for peas. When you go through and look at the economics, we have those here. Um, it's interesting, wheat over the three years averaged $4.92 a bushel, or eight cents, a little over eight cents a pound. Almost identical, identical to what the peas yield, or um, had a mar for a market price, 0 0.087, so a little over eight cents. Eight, um, over eight cents a pound. So the market price between these two crops over these three years was very similar. The big difference economically was of course the yield. Um, on average, wheat averaged $456 an acre. 
The piece for a gross economic return was $227 an acre. So I'm talking just gross returns. When I look at the cost of those two crops, it's interesting, I, um, I haven't completely summarized all that, that portion of the data yet, but the cost between wheat and peas was actually very similar. Pea seed's a little bit more expensive than the wheat seed. You spend a little bit more on the wheat um, fertility than you do on the pea fertility. And, and the herbicide packages um, kind of varied with each of them. Um, wheat, you may have to put a fungicide on. On the peas, we may have to put an insecticide on for, for the pea weevil. So there's a little bit of trade-offs, but overall the production cost between these two crops, I found in, in this study to be pretty, pretty similar. Now I want to talk, shift gears a little bit and talk about what's going on with the subsequent crops. So we see we're already starting off um, behind economically when we have peas in the rotation. Okay, what happens in the subsequent years? Can we make some of that up? Of course, I only have two years of data. Number three, we're looking at the third year of data on this one. But overall, the last two years, look at subsequent spring wheat yields. Um, wheat following wheat is about was averaged 55 bushel an acre. Wheat following peas averages 62 bushel an acre. So we are seeing a significant increase with spring wheat following winter peas than we are with spring wheat following winter wheat. And I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. No difference in protein. Um, we had a little bit difference in test weight. We actually get a little bit higher test weight, a half a point higher um, test weight um, with, with um, wheat following peas versus wheat following wheat. Economically, um, it's also significantly better with peas, $320 an acre versus wheat following wheat is only $285 an acre. So we did make up some of that economics between them. Uh, but when you go ahead and look at it overall, it's kind of taking that, the two year average between them. Um, looking, I'm just looking at 17 and 18, kind of ignoring what we had last year in 19 and what we have here. But overall, wheat following wheat over those two years, we have a gross return of $755 an acre. Peas, we have 700 or $579 an acre. So we are significantly less economically with, pe uh, with going pea, winter peas, then spring wheat, then we are going winter wheat, spring wheat. I, and you know, that's, I'm not sure it's necessarily a big surprise. So we gotta go through and look at how do we capture value on peas. Okay, some of the things, um, I talked about market price. If we can get a food value on the peas, then we can go ahead and increase the market price. That'll help close the gap. Um, you can see my yield was only 2,589 pounds an acre. I, I think um, the yield potential of peas with what some of the other growers are doing with them and maybe some better job controlling the, the pea weevil, I think we could expect a lot higher. We can expect some higher pea yields and stuff as well. I'm not sure we'll quite get to 5,568 pounds like we get with wheat, but I think we can significantly increase the yield. So I think we can increase the yield with peas. I think the market price has potential to increase. Um, with peas and that's gonna really narrow it up. Um, some of the other values that peas bring to the marketplace is weed control. Um, when you're looking at things, opportunities to control your winter annual grassy weeds with peas, it's a much easier situation in, in that cropping system than if you're utilizing a traditional winter wheat system um, where you're just really limited on, on what, you can, what you can use. Um, so kind of going back earlier, you know, understanding what you're doing, how you're moving along, and what the pluses and minuses are, but really trying to put dollar values on it. And when you look here, you know, when you talk about the subsequent crop production, um, when you look across the spring wheat, um, you know, we just have a more consistent, we have a better stand, a thicker stand than what we have over here with wheat on wheat. One of the things we're having a problem with in where we get into the wheat is we're not having really a consistent stand. Um, you can see I can walk through here and I can find some gaps in stands. And we often get into a lot of, a lot of the residue issues. And when you start getting in the residue, too much residue, it really starts um, reducing your, your spring wheat stands. And across here, you can look at all four wraps. It's really easy to find out where we have spring wheat on winter wheat residue versus either canola or 
spring wheat on pea ground. Uh, so that's one, one of the, the benefits. And when you get these holes and stuff in here, these gaps, you know, that really allows an opportunity for weeds to fill in that space. And so having a good competitive spring wheat crop also goes a long way to helping reduce the overall weed population you have on your farm. And so there's a little bit of trade off that long term versus short term economic thing. One of the things we talked about the yields and, and stuff in the subsequent crops, um, we have soil sample data here. Um, and it's interesting, we, we've been pulling soil samples across these studies each and every year. We don't have a significant difference in soil pH, no difference in um, organic matter, ammonium nitrogen, no difference in total nitrogen down to three feet, no difference in P, K, or S. No significant difference. What we do have a difference in is in nitrate nitrogen, um, significantly more with peas at 26 pounds, versus wheat where we only have 19 pounds. In the second foot, however, with nitrate nitrogen, peas, we have 18 pounds of N. Wheat, we only have 13. There was no significant difference in the third foot. And overall, we, um, in three feet, we have 63 pounds of nitrogen, nitrate nitrogen following peas, only 48 pounds following wheat. And, and I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. And so some of that can be captured. Across this study, we have more nitrogen here. However, we treated these tre treatments all the same, so they all got the same, same treatment. Moisture-wise, this one was kind of surprising to me. Um, over the three years, peas in the first foot had 2.75 inches per foot of moisture. Wheat had 3.07 inches of moisture. In that first foot, we actually have more moisture in the wheat ground than we did in the pea ground. And at first that didn't really make a lot of sense to me, but we're coming back a year later. And I talked about the residue issue. One of the things the residue does, it makes it a little bit more difficult to seed into, of course, more, more difficult seeding conditions, but it also helps hold some of, that, some of that moisture. So that's one of the benefits of going wheat on wheat versus wheat on peas, is you can get a little bit more moisture. We had no significant difference in moisture in the second foot or the third foot or total overall. But that was just kind of one of the interesting things that was pretty consistent each of the three years.